Welcome back to another summary for Trimming the Branches. Arc 2, Episode 4, Warden and the Grizzle Grinder. Alright guys, so, Kalen had spotted the hobgoblin crab creature, grabbed someone off the street, and had sent her back to her motley to pick up Musa. After hearing what happened, the two of them drove out and followed into the hedge, coming across a sea of gold on one side and kind of half-hazard houses on the other to represent the edge of the hedges. Not wasting time, they searched and found another hobgoblin, a clam-like creature, and asked if he'd seen crab. It gave a shrug, said yes, and directed them into the sea. The two swam and slowly pieced their way through the hedge, finding one-eyed crows and other abnormalities while talking to toadstools and trying to avoid bogs. At one point, Kalen just decided to swim through the earth. Eventually, they came out of the hedge, luckily, into a hollow. Looking around at this dark jungle-looking place, darkness radiating from within and hanging from outside cages were hobgoblins and hedge ghosts galore. Just within the darkness, they could see a large ogre sitting, sleeping, spear in hand. Kalen decided that she would check out the tops of the trees and found some goblin fruit, which she began to gather, while Musa stuck his way past the warden into the darkness. There he found a cabin, kind of ransacked and peeked inside, finding an elven woman working away in a kitchen. There were two beds and warmth coming from the home. Not wanting to stay too long, Musa decided to take a quick look around and on the outside found stairs leading what he thinks was back into the hedge proper out of this hollow. Finding an exit, he slipped back, Kalen grabbing the weird goblin fruit growing above and intimidating the others in the cages to be silent so it wouldn't wake the warden. Once Musa and Kalen met back up, Kalen opened the cages and a lot of them hurried. The warden awoke with a start, but people dashed past him quickly, making their way. Out of the cabin, the elven-looking woman stepped out with a shotgun. With quick thought, they Musa disoriented her, and they disappeared back into the hedge, with a bunch of hobgoblins and ghosts in hand. Eventually, following this tunnel, they popped out in one of the well-known trods they know, and made their way back to Witch's Hollow. A quick look around showed that a lot of her goblin fruit had been dug up, but it is there they address the hedge go the hedge ghosts and the hobgoblins. Most dispersed except for a tiny pixie hobgoblin who gave a shining ring as a reward. This token was not made of pledges, so Kaylin decided she would research it later, putting it in her pocket. They made their way towards where they know which uses to enter the hedge and found the lost man. Derek looked confused and uncertain what happened, looking like he had aged quite a bit since the last time Kaylin had seen him. So they popped back into the iron side and at which his hospitality began to piece together what happened to the man. He was taken by the crab through the sea, through a forest, and lost track of where he was in a field of sunflowers. It was there he described another hobgoblin that the group knew well called the gatekeeper. Apparently he made a deal with this gatekeeper and was flooded away with a chance to return home. They went and dropped the man back in the rich neighborhood that Kalen had seen him abducted from. And it is there they began to discuss and touch base with a number of changelings in the freehold. Letting them know what they had learned and learning from Grok that he has found a lot more hedge ghosts recently he's been ordered to destroy as they worked together, preparing for the mess of this gentry coming. Going to get some rest and Kalen to do some research, the motley split up for a bit, uh, finishing up what they need to do in their own individuals, as well as some planning for the future. It was then that they decided they would go deal with Kirk, the college student who was going to make them a bell of gold and iron, help him with his nightmares as was promised between them, him and Maxwell. The two arrived to find the elven woman passed out and already in his dreams. 
Kalen offered to kill her right there, but Musa calmed Kalen down and decided he would dive in. Entering the dream, it seemed that the elven woman was tormenting this poor college student with nightmares. She was spooked to see Musa there and seemed amenable to talking. Musa had started proposing a deal when, uh, back in the outside the dream, Kalen was assaulted by the warden from before. This giant ogre smashed her once before she flashed him into the future. He vanished with a popping sound and Kalen decided enough was enough and decided to tear a good chunk out of the poor elven woman. With a start, she woke with a scream, waking the dreamer, shocking Musa back to his own body. Musa quickly used a gift, gibbering tongues, to silence the poor human and convince them this was all fine, everything was going to be okay, and hurried everyone through the closet that it seemed that the ogre warden had come through. They popped back in the hedge and started making agreements. The elven woman explained that the Octo Claw had convinced her that with the gentry coming, it could make a deal with them to keep the gentry away from their hollow. They took it, and all they had to do was make this poor Kurt suffer every night until Halloween had come and passed. Taking the letter of the words and the pledge in mind, Musa quickly crafted a plan. He convinced them of a new pledge that kept them separate and kept Musa's motley keeping their promise that he would not have nightmares. It was with this promise that the others agreed to, and hopefully they will not cross paths again. They parted there, the motley able to both fulfill Maxwell's promise and let them fulfill theirs, and cutting any ties with seeing these creatures in the future, hopefully. The exact wording is that she will no longer return to Barry's iron side for the next year and a day. Musa will no longer return to her hollow for the next year and a day, and Kaelin will not interfere with what she must do to uphold her pledge until the end of October. It was with this oath that they spoke that the three left off on. Her looking injured but medicaled up from Kaelin, and off they went. And I believe that's where we left off, guys. Good session. See you guys again October 2nd at 1130 EST. Bye for now.